lost my cursor. Sorry about that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to showcase is, as this thing gets back loading, um, is the surface creation and the ability to do some pretty interesting things with it. Um, so the millions and millions and millions of points um, that are making up this ground region that I would want, well, this thing is really chugging here, um, that I would want to have in, in a surface, in a ground surface, Normal. That's probably overkill, right? I don't want to have a surface that has, um, you know, millions and millions and millions of vertices. And so TVC has a uh, option, the little text box here, um, for point clouds. And we cap the maximum number of points in a surface for you. Um, the default is half a million. It was set to 50,000 here. It can be whatever. If you do want those 500 million vertices and triangles in your surface, you bump this number up. But this number will control how dense that surface is up to this maximum. Same thing for volume, and then same thing in some of these uh, spatial algorithm, algorithms as well. Um, one more nice setting here to know is that the D, uh, rendering memory cache size will um, can be maxed out to half of your physical RAM size. So this is something nice to change ahead of time where you bump this up, you can put in any number, put in a thousand. Well, it knows that there's only 32 or 64 bit, uh, 64 gigabyte uh, RAM on this machine and it will default to half of that when I come back in here, 31. So some more magic here, I'm gonna turn the point cloud off and I've already gone in and created a surface and I've just got another minute or two we've got a couple more slides to show um, but I do want to show this surface here real quick um, so I added a surface boundary for just that field and then I used TBC's CAD tools to create a um, series of boundaries uh, somebody commented on the webinar uh, uh, link and the screenshot that I showed that some of the um, contour lines were going through the houses. Um, yes, I didn't take the houses out, so I wanted to take at least most of the houses out uh, for for this surface. And I'll show you what I did there with the contours. Sorry, I'm running out of time here. Um, but I did create these contours. And if you create, you see there's there's holes here in the surface um, that you know you don't want the surface model to be made up of um, houses or structures. And and I did a, I got most of the, the big houses here. Um, and I've got a nice contour map with my surface. Um, one more thing that is uh, really, really nice. I know we did a tip of the week on it. Um, but a really nice thing to improve the rendering and the visualization of your surface is I'm looking at my surface right now, right? But look at the rendering. It's rendered with the ortho. A really nice handy feature in the uh, surface creation. If you add an ortho as a surface member, it will essentially drape the ortho to your surface. And um, that's a really nice, nice handy uh, way to, rather than getting a triangulated visualization of your surfaces, you can look at the picture and you can see, and I can see here right off the bat, yeah, I missed, I missed cutting that tree out. So, or excuse me, cutting that, that house out. So I would need to go in, draw more rectangles, add it as a boundary to the surface, um, and then update the contour line so I wouldn't have uh, this mess of contours here where this house is. Um, yeah, so there's a whole lot more to do uh, with survey deliverables. I didn't talk about um, doing any QA checks on those control points relative to the surface or relative to the point cloud. Um, from here, you can also do more CAD line work. You can do more manual feature coding in TBC. Um, so again, like this is this is a really nice um, uh, 
um, demonstration of how TBC is positioning itself to be that one-stop shop for for all of your survey applications. Of course, you know the traditional GNSS and uh, Total Station. Hopefully, everyone's familiar with the SX10 and and you know we're rolling out the X7, um, but as well other sensor types as well. You know our our friends and our partners here um, with with Wingtra and and other drone manufacturers having TBC be that central data hub for surveyors for construction folks. Um, you know kind of one software that can meet all your needs rather than having to go bounce from package A to package B to package C. So that is the end of my very long demo. Let me hop back into the presentation. And QA, um, what do we got here, Jeff? Yeah, so there was a good question that came in from John and he asked, are the points being created on trees based on the classification of the cloud or the images? So the classification. So when we were doing tree extraction. Yeah, the classification is all point cloud based now. Um, the team is investigating, leveraging, and combining uh, imagery with point clouds. And this may be a question more towards uh, Francois, but this is the question came from Daniel, and he was wondering, um, does the Wingtra One have a PPK receiver? And the second part of that question is, is there an advantage to using a GCP network? Yes, uh, Wingtra One um, as a drone can be used with or without PPK. PPK is an option uh, that is very popular uh, because it saves so much time in the field. Uh, then the the question is is okay uh, if I have the option, what is what is better? Uh, my experience and the feedback that we get from user is is really. Uh, uh, PPK saves so much time in the field, and time in the field is very expensive uh, because you have a, a team, you have a vehicle, you have a, uh, uh, and other other overhead costs. Um, that if you can reduce this time in the field and reduce it to the 20 minutes, I mean, you see in this this example, in this example, the flight itself was 21 minutes, uh, and measuring all the points. Uh, and I want to thank uh, David Hughes for helping me. Uh, or for doing most of the job uh, on this region, it, it's it's probably one day of, of work. So you have one day just for the ground control point, and you have 20 minutes for the flight. So it, it's clearly uh, a nice addition to to, to have a, a PPK and a precise GNSS uh, uh, instead or in combination with ground control. Thank you, Francois. Uh, we had another question coming from Richard, and the question was, can you extract a specific area out of the entire data collection? Yes, so I would use that boundary that I showed in the um, advanced UAS, and that would be, um, that would just deliver, that would just create the deliverables within that boundary region. Okay. Um, and then there's been quite a few questions asking where some documentation would be to follow along with with this workflow here in the future. Yeah, so um, we've got um, some tutorials. Um, uh, the, this JXL workflow uh, is common once you get the data, the JXL UAV data into TBC, no matter the manufacturer, um, the workflow is, is more or less the same. Um, so there is a tutorial. Um, that's that's a very small data set that processes very quickly um, available online and that's one of the, the next com upcoming slides um, that bulletin the workflow bulletin that I referenced um, I will include in the data set with this recording and the presentation um, that is I, I it's six years old five and a half years old and I still refer to it um, it's very very handy to have so we'll get you everything uh, that you need Okay, thanks, Joe. Well, hey guys, we're running over time here. Um, we'll try to get to your questions after the webinar and respond um, separately, um, and we'll just continue going through this webinar slide deck. So, I just wanted to cover some resources and next steps for you all, um, and we can go on to the next slide. Uh, I'll let Francois talk about some Wingtra uh, website support steps for you guys. 
Yes, I mean, uh, uh, everything about workflows and, and, uh, and the very specific question, uh, the knowledge base is everything. I mean, it, it's really uh, all, the, all the latest information with all the, the details, linked information and so on. So I could only recommend that. And for general information and to understand the return on investment on this kind of, of numbers, uh, the website is full of case studies, white paper, uh, and uh, the latest release, is it software or hardware? We are uh, still developing uh, on, on both, on both uh, fronts. Awesome, thank you, Francois. So if you guys are curious, we also have the TBC webpage, um, trimble.com slash TBC. Uh, you guys can access all sorts of utilities and licensing, as well as installation help. Uh, we also have product bulletins, we have white papers and downloads um, all available on the website, as well as customer success stories and testimonials for you to, to go, go revisit. We also have our very handy TVC YouTube, cha YouTube channel. We have a lot of resources that, that uh, do a lot of work to put this out there for you guys. So please go visit this YouTube channel. There's 285 plus videos available for all of you to go watch for free. Um, this is a great learning experience and also just troubleshooting too. If you're having any kind of issues, um, I find myself going into this and, and using it for help. Uh, we also have all past TDC Power Hours available at the link above here in the, in the slide deck. I know we had quite a few questions about that um, in the questions box. So please revisit this link and watch any past session on demand for free. Uh, there's very, very good material there that's, a, that's been um, acquired over the years. So check that out. Uh, next steps for you guys, if you haven't already, download TBC version 520 to get all the, the newest capabilities and enhancements. Um, you can also get a free 30-day demo license code from your Trimble uh, distribution partner. If you're unaware of where they are located, please visit the link and you can find the nearest one uh, closest to you. Uh, the next TBC Power Hour, very exciting. So we're actually doing two this month in March. Um, the, ne the next one will be in next week. Um, same time, 8 a.m. Mountain, Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, our host will be Robert Martin from Navigation Electronics, Inc. Um, in the south, Southeast United States. And he will demonstrate how to make corrections to field data um, in TBC. So finding those common field data mistakes that are made in the field and then bringing that into TBC and making the corrections. Um, Robert's an excellent surveyor. Um, the registration link is below. And then also in the meantime, feel free to check out his YouTube channel. He posts some really nice content there as well. Thank you all for attending and thank you, Joe and Francois for their participation in announcing our TBC uh, collaboration with Wintra. Very exciting stuff and we hope you found it useful. Uh, we'll see you next, next week. Thank you, Francois. Thank you, Jeff. And thanks for attending, everybody. Um, stay strong, stay healthy out there, and, and we're here for you. Happy to uh, to help with any TBC and, and Wintra questions you got. So um, till next time, thanks, everybody.